All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for everybody for showing up. Uh, welcome to the March meeting of the DuPage Ross Council. My name is Jared Burton. I am your friendly Ross coordinator. Um, I'd like to start again by asking everybody to please make sure that your microphone's muted unless it is uh, your turn to speak so we can kind of cut down on interruptions. Today is a very, very uh, action-packed edition of the DuPage Ross Council. So we wanna make sure we got time to get to everybody today. Um, also, if you wanna enter your name, your organization, if that's applicable, uh, and your contact info into the chat, that is how we take attendance. Uh, the state loves to see who's taking part. So we wanna make sure we provide that for them. Uh, plus, it's just a great way to connect uh, with each other, and we'll talk about that and some other ways to do that in just uh, a little bit. Um, I do want to start this particular meeting just with a personal anecdote. Um, this month, March, we are talking about sober living, um, which is uh, just an incredibly important topic, not only for DuPage, but for uh, the entire state. Um, when we first started, Ross, we knew that we had to identify uh, gaps and services out here. So we kind of knew uh, what our gaps were, what to advocate for, what to push for. And it was really no surprise uh, that many people we talked to had mentioned sober living as a huge need. Um, I myself, a person in long-term recovery, went through sober living for the very first time uh, back in 2019. Uh, I actually came to Serenity House as a client. Uh, up until that point, I had avoided uh, sober living either out of like some weird misplaced ego thing or because of just like a lack of education about what sober living was and what it entailed. So like when I would hear the words, you know, like halfway house, right? I would imagine like, I don't know, like a rundown apartment filled with people on parole or something, you know, something very misguided as far as like what the actual services that were at these places. And so like when I came here, um, I realized it was like nothing um, what I had thought it was going to be beforehand. Um, you know, I was around 30 other men who were going through the exact same stuff I was. Uh, I had structure in place for the first time in a really, really long time. And uh, most importantly, I had uh, accountability, right? I was accountable to more than just myself, which was just super crucial uh, for me and my recovery at that point in time. Um, so since I got here as a client in 2019, you know, I've seen like literally hundreds of men and women uh, come through these houses, not only here at Serenity House, but in other sober living places uh, and maintain that recovery um, in and around DuPage. So I know that I'm not alone um, in saying that and seeing that uh, the successes of these places, but the need, right? We're, we're always talking about the need for more of these types of places. So as we start this meeting, you know, I, I, I want to ask all of you and challenge all of you to kind of continue to advocate for these houses. So when we hear people say stuff like, you know, not in my backyard, or we don't want that here, um, let's be the people uh, who takes those steps to educate folks on what it actually means to have sober living and the need for sober living in DuPage County. So I'm going to get that personal anecdote stuff out of the way. And like I said, we got a lot of stuff to get to today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can go over today's agenda. That's not an everyday thing. I don't even know if that might go into being able to monitor. Can we please make sure everyone's muted? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Um, that's why I try to mention it four or five times at the beginning. Um, all right, so we're going to go over a preview of kind of a lot of the upcoming meetings uh, and the trainings, because uh, we do have quite a bit coming up through DuPage Rosk in the coming months. Uh, we're going to get a update about our WhatsApp referral group, which just continues to grow. So Danny is going to walk you through that. Um, those of you who are hanging around at the beginning heard me say that we did hire a new DuPage Rosk outreach coordinator. So I'm going to uh, let him introduce himself here in a little bit. And then, like I said, we're talking sober living. So we're going to be talking to Courtney Ross from Oxford House, uh, our friend Richard from the Guild House, and Mariana from Evergreen. So we do have three guests. We're going to try to make sure we get everybody in today. Uh, after that, if we've got some time, and I hope we will, we'll talk about some other organizational updates, uh, maybe what's going on at your organization. If there's any collaborations or needs you want to uh, spotlight, that's that time for you. And again, if we have time at the end, uh, we'll also kind of spotlight what's happening at other Ross up here in our region. So let's talk about some of the upcoming meetings and things like that. Next week, uh, for our DuPage Ross presentation series, uh, we do have a presentation by Don Mictus, who works over now at Relief Mental Health, uh, formerly of Banyan, uh, who will be talking with us about uh, TMS therapy for mental health. These presentation series meetings, by the way, are Zoom only. Um, these are on the third uh, Wednesday of every month at 10 a.m. It's a chance for us to kind of dig in a little bit deeper on a topic on the recovery continuum. 
um, try to think outside the box a little bit as far as, you know, not only exposing us to different therapeutics, uh, but also things that are kind of happening in the recovery community in DuPage. So uh, these are open. Feel free to share these. Uh, we hope we can see you next week. Uh, we're kind of booked out for the rest of the spring. I just want to highlight a few of those. Um, the next Ross Council meeting on April 10th, uh, we have a couple of guests. We're going to be talking about uh, specialized uh, mental health and um, substance use services for refugee and BIPOC population, uh, as well as uh, welcoming someone from Restoration 61 who does great work with uh, human trafficking in our area. Uh, presentation series for April 17th, we'll be talking about uh, methadone as an option for medication-assisted recovery. Uh, in May, we're gonna be talking about uh, recovery for veterans in our area. Uh, the presentation series in May will be about ketamine. And then in June, we're going to be talking about first responders. So we're always looking uh, for presentations. We're always looking for people willing to come and talk about their organization. Uh, if that interests you, please feel free to reach out to me and we'll talk about booking you uh, maybe in the summer or into the fall. Uh, and as always, these are always open to the public. Feel free to share these and um, hopefully we can see you at some of those. This is a free training that's coming up, uh, open to the public. If anyone's looking to get some CEUs, if you're like me and you're like us who work in the field, we always need CEUs. Uh, this is a good one coming up on Tuesday, March 26th here at Serenity House, uh, 12 p.m. to 4.30. Uh, it will be about understanding, coping, and healing from abuse and trauma. Um, again, Hello. that's our big hall. We can make sure everybody's muted. Um, feel free to come out for that one. Um, we're going to start to hopefully provide more of these trainings that are open to the public and provide these CEUs, and this is going to be a good one. So make sure you can join us for that. Uh, we had our very first DuPage Ross game night uh, a couple of months ago, and it was such a success that we have decided to make it semi-regular. So for the very next game night, which will be on Saturday, April 20th, by the way, I've been told by so many people that's 420 that I did not do that on purpose. That is like a happy accident. Uh, but feel free to come on out. That's at Serenity House from 7 to 9 p.m. I'm going to show off this trophy. If you're If you're on our Facebook group, you've seen this. But this says DuPage Ross game night goat, and it has a goat on it. This is going to someone that night on game night. So if you want to show off your uh, Mario Kart skills, possibly some other games, you can walk away with this trophy. And this is real gold. Um, so you're going to want to take this one home with you. Uh, but yeah, feel free to share this. If you've got organizations, you've got clients who are looking for sober fun events, uh, feel free to share this. We would love to have them. Last thing to announce, uh, if you've been coming to our meetings or you've been a part of DuPage Ross for a while, you'll know that um, about every quarter or so, we do some kind of drive to collect items for um, an organization that does work on the continuum in DuPage County. Uh, the one coming up, which we're going to start collecting stuff basically now through May, uh, we're going to be doing a drive for the Midwest Shelter for Homeless Veterans. So uh, Midwest Shelter for Homeless Veterans uh, does amazing work uh, in that particular sector, and they're always looking for specific needs. If you've ever gone to their website, they do have a list of donation items that they uh, always could use. And I've listed a few of them um, on this particular flyer. As you can see, it's kind of across the board there, but household items, kitchen stuff, linens, toiletries, um, all kinds of clothing, winter items, et cetera. They could all use any of that type of stuff. Um, some of our drives that we've done previously, uh, we've done stuff for People's Resource Center. We've done drives for uh, Teen Parent Connection. Point being, um, Ross members have always done an amazing job at uh, donating and making sure that we come through for these different organizations. I mean, like I've had to take multiple trips to People's Resource Center to drop off like dozens of bags of clothing because you guys have really, really uh, shown up and, and really helped out uh, and, and were very selfless in some of the donations you made. So uh, the way to donate, you can either drop them off at Serenity House um, and just let them know that it's for the Ross Drive, or you can always contact me to make like other arrangements uh, but yeah, let's let's show the veterans in DuPage County that uh, they are not forgotten, and let's make sure that they got all of the stuff that they need. Um, I'm going to stop my particular uh, uh, housekeeping stuff there, and I'm going to introduce somebody else, which is Danny Sorbis. So Danny is one of my amazing colleagues, but if you're a part of our DuPage Ross WhatsApp referral group, you know Danny very well. He uh, runs a very tight ship over there. He does an amazing job in making sure that that uh, referral group is humming at all at all times. So I'm gonna turn it over to him for a minute to maybe give uh, just a brief explanation of what it is for newcomers and then what's happening um, on that WhatsApp referral group. So Danny, go right ahead. 
Thanks, Jared. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so WhatsApp, it is our referral hub. Um, it started off as a text chain between Jared and 17 other people um, just looking to fill in the gaps of treatment. So oftentimes when it comes to substance use challenges or even mental health challenges, we can't find the right level of care, right, or at least an immediate placement. Um, that's where that text chain came through. But we wanted to expand that. We wanted to make it as big as possible and help as many people as we could. So we found WhatsApp. That way, it doesn't matter if you have an Android or a iPhone. A lot of people could be on there. So, for example, right now, we have 89 members, 89 members from different organizations throughout Illinois, DuPage County, Will County, Winnebago, DeKalb, so on and so forth, right? All throughout, nor mostly up in the northern region, but even the central and southern regions as well. Um, we've been, this month, we've been joined by members from the following organizations, 360 Youth Services, the Foundation Center, Heart Life Ministries, Recovery 180, Ross Consul, Family Shelter Service, and Metropolitan Family Services, DuPage, Serenity House, Way Back In, Symmetria Recovery, Northwestern Medicine, Ben Gordon Center, and a College of DuPage student who is a mental health advocate. Over the last month, we've been able to provide referrals for detox and residential treatment for substance use disorders, PHP and IOP for substance use disorders and mental health challenges, young adult 12-step meetings, interventionists, smart support groups, support groups for families, outpatient therapists and psychiatrists, programming for developmentally disabled, um, eating disorder treatment, grief and loss support, anger management, trauma support, harm reduction materials, and sober living. New starting this month, we're going to identify a referral MVP for the member who provided the most referrals. This month's referral MVP is Becky Sadler from Rosecrans. Thank you, Becky, and thank you all, because uh, there's a lot of people who are close in the running. Whether you provided or requested one or 100 referrals, they're all meaningful into helping our clients, and we thank you for your support. I'm going to put my information in the chat uh, with my email. So if you're interested in learning more and joining the WhatsApp referral group, please send me an email. Um, I would say send me an email instead of responding to the chat because I'm about to log off of the meeting to come in person. But thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Danny. And yeah, thanks to everybody who takes part in that referral group. It's been a godsend for a lot of us who uh, not only need like on the spot help with referrals, but a warm handoff. Like it's good to get to know each other in that group. And we know that when we're asking or receiving a referral, we know that those people are getting uh, the services that they need. So thank you to Danny for making sure that thing runs smoothly. Um, next up, I did mention him earlier. Uh, I want to take a minute to introduce our new outreach coordinator, Joshua Rich. Now we're going to do this awkwardly here. He's going to walk up to this and look in that camera, but I'm going to talk to him on this microphone. So Josh, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, uh, talk maybe just a little bit about your background and, uh, what you're going to be doing here for DuPage Rosk. Yeah. Thanks. Make sure it's switched on too. It is on. Yes. All right. Thank you, Jared. Um, so like Jared said, I am the new outreach coordinator for DuPage Rosk. I have been here, uh, it will be actually a month this week. Um, so part of my role here is to connect uh, Rosk with their services with different agencies, organizations in the community within DuPage County and help bridge the gaps and fill the gaps of services that are needed. I am a person in long-term recovery. I come from about eight years of uh, social work service in this field at different levels of substance use and mental health treatment facilities. Uh, prior to that, I was a firefighter paramedic for 10 years. Uh, so got a lot of experience with that. Um, so like Jarrett said before in June, if you want to check out the first responder Ross meeting, I will be presenting on that and kind of talking about the different mental health challenges and substance use challenges that are experienced in that field. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Um, I'm going to put his contact info in the chat too, and I'll also follow it up in, a, in an email to everybody. But um, I think what he said was super important, which is uh, there's so much amazing work that gets done on the front lines by first responders. We also have to think about you know, their own wellness and mental health and uh, the challenges they face as they go through that stuff. So I'm really looking forward to spotlighting uh, first responders when we get to June. So uh, don't be surprised if Josh reaches out to you and uh, wants to take you out for coffee. Uh, he means very well. Um, so we look forward to having him out there in the community. All right. So we got all of that out of the way. So we are now going to get to the guests for today. Um, like I said, we're talking sober living. Um, first off to start, I want to introduce a member 
who has been coming to these meetings from almost the very beginning of DuPage Rosk um, and somebody who provides uh, amazing peer support over at the Guild House in Blue Island. And uh, just a great guy. And I love it that he's here at every meeting. Um, he comes out and takes part with uh, you know, events at Serenity House uh, when Guild House comes over. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, our friend Richard Butts to talk about the Guild House and the services they provide. Uh, Richard, you should be a co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. I'm going to give it to you, friend. We'll make sure you're unmuted first, and then uh, then we'll go. Muted, and am I there? Okay. Share my screen. Okay, I'm stuck there. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Do you have your uh, assistant there to help you? Hey, if Angela. You want, if you want, how about this, Richard? Why don't you mute again? I'll come back to you. Why don't you get Angela to come help you out? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump over to someone else, then we'll get back to you. So uh, Courtney Ross, you were up next. So Courtney uh, does great work uh, with Oxford House, Inc. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Oxford House. They have been uh, an institution as far as sober living goes in Illinois. And uh, just in the past few years, um, started making some inroads into uh, DuPage County. So you may or may not know that there are some uh, Oxford houses that have been opened up in DuPage County. So Courtney is here to talk to you a little bit about Oxford House. And uh, Courtney, I'm going to give it to you. All right. Thanks so much, Jared. Um, my name is Courtney Ross, and I am a resource coordinator with Oxford House, Inc. And it's just a few of my responsibilities uh, are to network with the community, uh, the providers, um, the Department of Corrections, um, establish resources and nurture relationships with our community um, so that not only our members, but, you know, in this field, we all kind of overlap. You know, all of us need, you know, some of the services or all of the services that are particularly um, um, focused on in the ROSC meeting. Um, Oxford House is sober transitional housing. And, you know, I have to agree with Jared when he mentioned earlier, you know, many moons ago, whenever I would hear about sober living, uh, I just had this warped idea mainly because my only experience pre-Oxford House was a Department of Corrections halfway house. Um, and um, I later found out uh, that Oxford House could be the very last house on the block for me. I moved into my very first Oxford House April 4th of 2017, I struggled with crack cocaine, liquor, and toxic relationships for over 20 years. Um, jails and prisons, homelessness, all of that is in my story. Poor parenting, you know, um, all of that is in my story, um, but God. Um, in order to get into an Oxford house, you got to do an interview. Uh, we have a, a simple one sheeter for those people that are, for those individuals that are in treatment. You can actually go on this website that Jared has shared on the screen. And, you know, there's frequently asked questions, there's stories, there's, there's all kinds of information, but there is also the simple application. You know, in a perfect world, um, an application should be submitted at least two weeks prior to their completion date so that we can make it possible for a smooth trans transition from A to B. Our vacancy website, super user friendly. Sorry, Courtney. Can we make sure everyone's muted, please? Thank you. Sorry. Can everyone please make sure they're muted? Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Um, our website is super user friendly. Uh, you'll go in and enter the state, the county, and the gender. So if Jared was to put in, yep, Illinois, and then do page. Yep, those are the houses that we have in DuPage, but you can even be specific if you're looking for a house for men, a house for men with children, a house for women, and a house for women with children. Uh, we do have some rules, you know, uh, not many, but we do have some rules. Um, for the first 30 days, you're on probation. That is an opportunity for you to get to know uh, your housemates as well as get acclimated with the level of expectations. The first two weeks, you got to get a job. The first two weeks, you got to get a sponsor. For the first 30 days, you got to attend five recovery related uh, meetings a week with a meeting sheet. There's a curfew of 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 12 midnight, Friday and Saturday. There is a once a week mandatory business meeting. Um, our Oxford houses are single family homes. Okay, the Federal Fair Housing Act of 1988 grants us the opportunity and the privilege to have nine same sex non-related individuals in a house this mandatory business meeting is our opportunity to all sit down as a family and pay bills, check in with each other, address any behaviors or concerns, um, and keep it moving. You know, uh, the one piece that Oxford House prides itself on is that single family housing piece, which also grants us the privilege to be able to live in an Oxford house for the rest of your life. As long as you do not use, you pay your fair share and no disruptive behaviors. Out of everything that I first heard about Oxford house, yes, our houses are in nice neighborhoods. Yes, you know, there is plenty of space within our homes for nine same-sex individuals. But the one piece that just kind of tugged at my heart was in six months, these people are not going to say you have successfully completed. You know, with 20 years of chronic relapse and chronic using, six months was not going to be enough for me to even begin to uh, attempt some adulting, um, 18 months wasn't either, you know? Um, but in an Oxford house, you can live there for the rest of your life. We pride ourselves on, this organization prides itself on expansion. Our goal is to have 10,000 houses right now, we have 3,600 in the United States, and we are in two other countries. Here in the state of Illinois, we have 92. Um, I, I could talk about Oxford House forever and ever, um, but I would like to close with this. You know, from my own personal experience of living in an Oxford House, you know, those women welcomed me in. Um, the model is perfect. However, we are not, you know, we have our ups and our downs and we figure it out. Sometimes there's more month than money. Sometimes there's personality clashes. At the end of the day, if we don't grow, we got to go. Period. Period. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yo, that's that. That's great, Courtney. Uh, thank you very, very much. And thank you for sharing about your own personal journey coming through uh, Oxford House. I just want to uh, ask a couple of follow up things. And then if anybody has any questions, we can open it up. But say I'm somebody who is trying to like um, access Sober Living or Oxford House for the very first time. Let's walk them through that one more time. So they can go through. And like I said, on this 
uh, oxfordvacancies.com. They can search by the county. They can search by gender. Um, the next process is filling out that application, right? And then what? What's the process from well, application so between, to the door? Yes, in between the application and uh, uh, or in between the website and the application, once you get on the website, you know, as you all can see, you can, uh, uh, Oxford House of Johnny, you can go all the way across there and it has every piece of information that an individual would need. The contact for the house is Sam T. Call Sam, you know, and he may or may not have you fill out an application, uh, you know, but what he will do is set up an interview. OK, uh, their house meetings are on Sundays at 1130 a.m. But if it is an emergency, houses will make special accommodations to interview that individual. There's a move in fee. Uh, our houses run about 175 a week. But guess what? The lack of money does not determine or dictate whether or not you are accepted. OK, we utilize a 32 question uh, interview etiquette. And they're basic questions, just th they were formed to give the members of that house as well as the interviewee the opportunity to kind of get to know each other. You know, what's your employment history? You know, uh, um, what's your criminal background? Do you have a sponsor? Are you willing to work a 12-step program or a recovery program? You know, uh, just basic questions. Um, and so if and when a person does fill out an application and they will have the opportunity to specify which county they want to go to so that then that application is sent to all the houses in that county. And in a perfect world, someone will reach out to that individual within 24 hours. There we go. That's great. Um, so yeah, I've I've used this uh, through ROSC multiple times because uh, we do run across those cases where somebody desperately needs sober living and they need it yesterday. You know, and Oxford House has always been great as far as getting our folks in there when they need a safe place like this. Um, and I think the idea that you mentioned of giving people that extra time, because mm -hmm. like you said, a lot of us you know, we didn't, we didn't become this way overnight. So we need more than two, three, four, five, six months. You know, we need, we need time to be able to get back out. And I think that's super, super crucial. Um, so yeah, Courtney, thank you so much. Uh, does anybody here on the meeting have any questions for Courtney? Okay. I see Eric with the hand up. Yeah. Uh, my question is probably very basic. I was wondering if you had houses for, um, Lesbians, gays, tra transgenders, all those, um, all those, um, other, other t lifestyles. Yes. Okay. So here in the state of Illinois, we have actually been trying to, um, work more closely on forming that, uh, you know, creating that. However, we do have. Um, individuals that identify uh, a specific way and we pride ourselves on educating our members to be open-minded. Um, I know uh, in Aurora um, that there is a specific house that has welcomed in an individual and life is good. You know, um, at one point, at one time, and then there's another house in DuPage. Yes. Um, so right now we don't have specific housing, you know, homes for that group of individuals, but we are all inclusive. Okay. Uh, we're one of the few houses that, um, or few housing pieces that, you know, we're medically assisted recovery friendly. You know, we do have special guidelines to go along with anyone on medication. They have to have a lockbox. We don't, no one in that house administers anyone else's medication. You know, random pill counts based on behavior. Oxford House is evidence-based. 
DePaul University has been studying us since the late 80s. And the proof is in the numbers, okay? Um, but we are all inclusive. That's awesome. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you for your question, Eric. Uh, if anybody has any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out, Courtney. You can put your info in the chat, and then uh, I will always direct people to Oxford House if they're looking for uh, sober living. So thank you for coming. Uh, Richard is currently sharing his screen. He has uh, got a great setup here. That We made it happen, Richard. We made it happen. Uh, so yeah, Richard Butts uh, is a recovery coach over at Guildhouse, and we are glad to have him here. So Richard, I'm going to give it over to you now, sir. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I don't know how we did it, but and I don't know why I'm sitting there on the bottom of the screen also, but we we got it up there. So anyway, yeah, my name is Richard Buss. I am the uh, recovery coach, and I'm also National Certified Recovery Specialist here at the Guildhouse of Blue Island. Uh, as you can see there, my email is in there, and I've also already shared the link for this uh, for the slide presentation uh, in the chat earlier uh, <clears throat> So it's already up there to be, uh, if anybody wants to just copy the link and get it. So what is the Guildhouse? Uh, <clears throat> Guildhouse is a men's level 3.1 treatment center. Uh, we were founded back in 1987 uh, by a retired firefighter by the name of Jack King. Uh, he started this house, uh, you know, he uh, struggled many, many years to get himself uh, sober, but he finally figured it out, you know, just like everybody else tries to figure it out. And then he founded this wonderful house there. It's, uh, we're located in Blue Island, Illinois. Um, you know, and, and like I said, Jack is, you know, we can't thank him enough for what he did back in 1987 for starting up this house. We offer uh, our services that we offer here, okay, we are typically a 90-day program. As everybody knows, uh, you know, uh, we are a program that we take people in. They come in from a 28-day rehab program, okay? We uh, we don't just take people off the street. You have to come in from a program. And, uh, you know, typically our program runs 90 days. Some guys uh, don't need the 90 days of counseling, and some guys do need, the you know, 90 days and beyond. You know, we do offer on-site staff counseling, you know, as and, and also in regards to, you know, having, uh, you know, recovery coach and recovery specialist here. And uh, we also have, uh, you know, many, many weekly AA and NA meetings. The uh, next slide is uh, we offer a meeting every single day of the week. Uh, Monday, uh, you know, every single day there is some sort of meeting going on, whether it be Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. And, uh, you know, they all are, every meeting is open. So anybody who's seeing this uh, particular thing right now is, please, you're more than welcome to come to this house any night of the week. And, uh uh, we'd love to have you here and see you around. We, uh, you know, uh, my presentation is short and sweet, but I did want to, uh, you know, mention some upcoming fellowship events that we have. Uh, these are some pretty big events that happen, uh, you know, in the city here and stuff like that. We have our, uh, our of course, our uh, annual million dollar break golf outing, which is going to happen on June 2nd. Registration is now open for that. So anybody who uh, wants to happen, it is a absolute fun, fantastic day uh, to get out there. And it's not just about golf. Uh, you know, it's not about the Guildhouse, but it is about being out there with a bunch of other like-minded people having a really, really good time. Okay. Uh, second up we have is uh, our, our uh, an, uh, annual summer, uh, summer co-ed retreat up at Lake Bennett, Wisconsin, the 16th through the 18th. Uh, Next up after that, we'll have our, our we, we've actually changed it around a little bit this year. We're going to break away from it, calling it a pig roast, and we're going to turn it into the Guildhouse Family Picnic. And uh, we think that that's a little bit better for us. Um, it, 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 and it's just the same, same thing. It's another day. We have a, a live music. We have, a, we will have, we will be roasting a pig, but uh, you know, the atmosphere there is just a fun day for, for not just the guys in the house to be able to bring their families in, you know, for, for some kind of an, for an event. But it, it's just, you know, the whole uh, uh, community of recovery can get together and have a good time. Uh, the, like I said, live music, uh, you know, great food, great fellowship all day. And uh, then coming up on September 22nd, uh, we will be hosting our second annual 
Blue Bridges 5K. Uh, we had a, uh, you know, we tried it last year for the first time, and I cannot, uh, it, you know, personally, I thought it was huge success, man. It was a great, great day. Uh, same thing, a lot of people coming out just to have a great time and to be able to fellowship with other like-minded people. You know, and uh, and and uh, and plus, you know, get a little fit and stuff like that. We uh, we've got a great uh, a great course set up down here that we go. It runs up along the canal, runs out, uh, you know, down past the uh, expressway, all in a really nice path. And uh, and then coming back to the house, and we have a food court, uh, food and uh, uh, activity court set up. Uh, you know, some things to do for the kids. It's it's just uh, you know it was a great event last year and we're hoping that it's uh, bigger and better than it was last year. So we'll, you know we'll see what happens on that. Um, here also is just a, a, a brochure of the uh, uh, of the events that are upcoming, and um, and you know like I said the uh, the link to the post is in there if anybody wants to uh, copy that link and get it. And I don't know what happened to my last page. I had one last page that had all of our, uh, it's not there, it says six of six and we're done. But uh, I had one last page on there that had all of our contact information. But uh, uh, yeah, you can just see at the bottom there. So uh, anything that you would really need, you can get at guildhouse.org. Every uh, link to every event, everything uh, link to the house, link to the phone numbers, uh, everything is on there. We're also on Facebook. Uh, Instagram, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're out there uh, doing what we need to do to uh, to try to make everything, everything, you know, is all about recovery. And that's what we're all in this in this business for. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be a member of the Guildhouse. I'm, I, I, I cannot, you know, uh, say enough about how my mentors here have, have taught me. And, uh, you know, I, I've actually got an anniversary coming up in a couple of days. That, what do you got? Uh, I'm, what, what do you got this year? Huh? What's your what's your anniversary this year? I'll be uh, uh you know through the grace of God and the and the mentors that I have I'll be sober four years on Friday. Everybody clap. Yeah. Uh, Richard, I want to say yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. Too. You should be proud. I want to say um first of all, uh congratulations again on being um not only with your anniversary but being certified as a recovery coach. I know you came and took the training. Uh, the C-car training uh, that we did here at Serenity House. How have you liked being a recovery coach? Surely. And how has that uh, work been for you over at Guildhouse as a certified coach? Well, for, for me, it's it's amazing, you know, and, and that's why when I, you know, decided to, to actually get the MCRS too. But, uh, you know, it, it's nice that um, I have a little bit more of an understanding when I, you know, if the guys want to come talk to me or something, you know, like I said, the counselors are our main goal here, you know, but they're not here at night on the weekends and things like that. And and sometimes the guy needs to talk about something and having that background and that training, I'm able to listen a little better than what I used to before. You know, um, a lot of things that have, can be said, you know, I, uh, you know, I can be one thing, you know, sometimes because, you know, we have a house to run here and, 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 and that's, you know, that's important. But when it comes to recovery, I am always, always, I mean, because I want everybody to have what I have, you know, I want to hear the guys that are coming back in a couple of years saying, Hey man, I, I, I'm turning them together two years now. You know, that makes me from this house, moves into one of our, our other houses and he still comes back and talks to me. You know, that that's fantastic. That's what I'm here for. And that's what I will continue to do for this house. And, uh, you know, until such the time that I don't do it no more. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing, man. You know, and, and like I said, and then earning the certificate was, uh, you know, I, I'm not uh, a, a spring ticket anymore. And, and earning that at my age was that was a huge accomplishment for me personally and professionally, you know. Well, you're doing a great job. And uh, Al, your executive director, popped in the chat to say he was here to support you. Uh, you guys do <laughs> an amazing job uh, with your alumni network, too. So all of these events that uh, is coming up through the Guildhouse, go check them out because it is such a strong alumni network and one that uh, really a lot of us could model after because of the support that they get. And the the men who go through that house and come back to help the new the newcomers is is pretty amazing. Um, so Richard, thank you again. Absolutely. Uh, for coming to present 
Uh, if anybody has any questions, check out guildhouse.org. And uh, Richard's uh, probably put his contact info in the chat too. So I'm going to go ahead and wrestle the screen. I, put back. The, I actually put the link with everything in there. Oh, there you go. You shut me down. Thank you. I didn't have to figure that one out. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Richard. And next, I'm going to co host. No my problem. So my next guest is actually a uh, returning guest. We had her on when uh, before this sober living home even really got started, and that's uh, Mariana Prokop, uh, who uh, runs Evergreen Shared Recovery Home. Um, she has got it up and running, and uh, I think she is already a great success story and someone who had a passion um, and and saw the need for a place like this, especially for women in DuPage County. So we talked to Oxford House, who do men and women. We talked to Guild House, who do men. And so let's talk to Mariana now, who's doing that for women in DuPage County. So Mariana, uh, you should have control if you want to share, and welcome back. Yes. Um, Hello, everyone. Let me see if I can minimize this or maybe move it. We can see it. This bar, this bar up here. Can you see the bar as well, the Zoom bar? I, we, we see it fine. We see your presentation okay. fine. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Jared. I uh, it's, it's an honor to be here with, with all of you. Um, I did want to talk about Evergreen Shared Housing. Uh, my name is Mariana Prokop, and I'm a housing provider. And Evergreen is a nonprofit organization that was founded in the middle of last year. So it's a fairly uh, new organization. Uh, we provide a sober living to women who are recovering from substance use disorder. Um, I'm a person in recovery as well, and I am a firm believer in uh, transformation and change in order for us to become better versions of ourselves. Um, hence the uh, welcome to Met metamorphosis and a butterfly logo. So let me see. Okay, I do want to point out this uh, recovery definition that I got off of uh, SAMHSA's website. Uh, and it states that recovery is a process of change through which individuals improve their health and wellness and live self-directed lives to reach their full potential. So um, Evergreen focuses on women who are serious about their recovery. Uh, we provide compassionate, safe, and reliable housing located in Carroll Stream uh, to promote their recovery and personal growth. And I do want to point out that Courtney has done an exceptional um, introduction to what a sober living looks like. So she went into details and a lot of our policies and procedures, you know, have Oxford houses and Serenity house to, uh, to look for um, guidance, you know, so a lot of our policies and procedures reflect similar things that Oxford and Serenity house offers as well. Okay. So our residents, um, Evergreen cares for adult women who have completed treatment for substance use disorders and are serious about recovery and willing to submit to the structure and accountability of the home. Um, women who choose to live at Evergreen are moving towards becoming independent. So they are either working, searching for jobs, um, or getting education or volunteering. They do have a support system in place, such as regular attendance of recovery meetings or IOP and individual counseling. And if they do come to us um, and still in need of, you know, self-help group or sponsors or other services, um, we've utilized uh, many of you here uh, in this meeting. And I'm, I'm, again, so grateful and I get emotional and teary because many of you has have helped tremendously um, for Evergreen to come true. Uh, this past year. So thank you all. Um, Jared and Rosk have been tremendously supportive in assisting with providing some of the resources to the women of, in the house. So our home, as I mentioned, is located in Carroll Stream. It's a fully furnished home where residents share four double occupancy bedrooms and three bathrooms. We have a spacious um, family room. These are some of the photos from the house, our bedrooms, this is our living room, kitchen, dining room. We're trying to keep it as clean. This, these pictures were taken before 
ladies moved in, but we're trying our hardest to, to keep it organized and nice and neat. This is the backyard. We're planning on to do some gardening, um, which you know is proven to do wonders for our, our body, mind, and spirit. So we're excited about spring coming. So some of the studies on effectiveness of sober living, research suggests that sober living environments can contribute to sustained recovery by providing structure, accountability, and supportive community. Sober living homes often serve as a bridge between formal addiction treatment and independent living. Um, so as Evergreen came about around middle of last year, um, the organization is still very young. Um, and this, when, when I, I had, back in 2021, I attended a three-day conference that was focused, focused only on sober living. And I was, I was convinced I never lived in a sober living home, but I wish I had had uh, because my, my recovery would have been so much easier. And I have chills right now. But I am so grateful that I can provide this to, to the women and I have the means and I can show that recovery is, is possible. So I'm very, very uh, involved with the ladies and I love that part of it and I still want to stay involved. There is an overwhelm uh, part uh, that plays a role in this as well. So I'm probably going to need some assistance pretty soon. Uh, so uh, we're also, Evergreen also wants to focus on a holistic approach, um, which leads to successful long-term recovery. Uh, and it looks at a whole person, uh, the, the person's physical, emotional, social, and spiritual well-being are taken into consideration, which is why we are here to support and guide our residents to the resources they may need. So some of those resources that we can point our ladies to, um, are peer recovery support, self-care plan development, nutrition and exercise, resume development, recreation and creativity classes, spiritual gatherings, finance and time management, self-help services, relationship and community enhancement. Um, I'm also planning on to slowly bring in some enrichment programs into the home, such as presentations on meal planning and cooking demos, meditation and breath work, um, sound healing, art therapy, we did forest bathing with Jarrett last year to educate our residents on the importance of the wellness and the connection between the body, mind, and spirit. So our weekly fee is 220, uh, includes bed and utilities, and one-time intake fee is $250. We are currently almost at full capacity. Our latest, we can house up to eight women, and we have our latest edition moving in on March 20th. Uh, which is very exciting. And if anybody's contemplating on the idea of opening one um, or two, uh, there is a great need. So I encourage it. You know, maybe there's a new home on the horizon for us. Who knows? We'll see. Um, okay. Um, I did want to mention a couple of uh, other things. So yes, yes. Uh, Jared had asked me to share some of the challenges and successes. You know, building Evergreen from ground up has been a great challenge. But again, I, I feel that I have, I'm not alone. I have many people, many, many of you here who I can turn to uh, for any advice and guidance. Um, and what has come a full circle for me in the moment is that one of the ladies in the house is um, pursuing a CADC program at COD. So it's just to see that transformation, it's humbling. And I'm like, yes, we win. This is amazing. Uh, so I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank many of you and everyone who has supported Evergreen throughout their, their journey. Oops. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can you hear me, Jared? I'm sorry. Yeah, I no, no, I can hear you. Yeah, we're good. My computer. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we're good. We can so, see it. So yes, uh, application is online. Uh, house rules are online, so it's all easily accessible. And I'm on the phone. You know, whenever somebody calls, there are a few women who have called, and uh, we're creating a wait list. So there is a great need. So if anybody, as I said, if anybody's contemplating running a sober living, um, it's needed. So thank you. Yeah, Mariana, thank you. Uh, it's been pretty uh, amazing to see 
you know, in the span of a year, like where, where you've come, right. As you know, you came and took a tour and we had you here and we were talking about, you know, uh, you getting your very first resident, right. So now that you're almost full is pretty amazing. And, uh, I think two important things, and then I'll open it up for questions is, um, you know, you really are touching on the holistic part, which I think is super important. Um, because, you know, you do get to a point where, you know, you're kind of, uh, into your recovery a little bit, maybe that's, you know, a few months, and then you're kind of looking at the rest of your life, like, what am I doing to enrich the rest of it, right? And I think for some of us who've gone through early recovery, we don't know what we like, we don't know what our interests are, because our only interests were substances for however many years. So like introducing the women to stuff like art therapy or, you know, different types of spiritual groups or stuff like cooking classes. Like, I think that type of thing is really, really crucial um, just to get people to understand and find out what it is they like to do. Um, and I think there's been so many people um, at different sober living houses, whether that's at yours or Serenity House or Oxford or Guildhouse, um, who find what they really enjoy to do when they are in recovery because they get exposed to stuff like that. Um, so I think that's, you know, super, super important. Um, but yeah, the other, the other piece was, uh, community enrichment. So I think that's really, really important too, because that's a piece of like, okay, how can we get out of our own heads? Right. How can we, uh, think less about ourselves and more towards like, what are we giving back to the community that we're a part of? And I think, uh, by challenging residents to do stuff like that, you really do try to get them out of their own head. Right. As opposed to just sitting around the house, you know, uh, thinking about themselves, you know, what can we do to give back to the people around us or the community around us? Um, and it's just, I think it's, uh, it's amazing what you've been able to do. I know I've connected you with plenty of people and I will continue to do that just because I think it's such a, such an important mission and, uh, yeah, whatever you need, uh, we're always happy to do, um, mm -hmm. the, yeah. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Mariana? We do have a couple of minutes here. I'm happy to uh, let somebody jump on. I see Bruce unmuting. Bruce is a, uh, this is a former student of yours. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, hi. I, I love hearing you talk and, and do your thing there, Mariana. You know, I had a question that I never asked you. Did you have problems with the, you know, not in my backyard, it, you know, opening your facility? I never asked you that question. So I had decided because NIMBY uh, was one of the things that had held me back from pursuing this for at least a year. I was just so scared. And, you know, fear plays a big role in, in you know, change and creating something happen. So I just went and I said, I'm just going to deal with it. Whatever happens, I'm just going to deal with it when it happens. And um, we acquired a home, you know, did a few things to the house um, while we were working there. My husband and I, some neighbors came and introduced themselves, and we had just told them that this is going to be a rental, which it is. Uh, but we had decided not to go out and say what that it was going to be sober living just because of the stigma and what people, a lot of people relate uh, recovery and sober living to. I did... Um, tell the ladies that, you know, nobody knows, nobody's aware, which I'm planning on to change because I want to show the neighbors that there's no dangerous people coming in here. Uh, there is no, uh, nobody's dealing drugs or drinking or, you know, there's nothing happening. These are normal people who are in recovery and they need support. So they are instructed to, if anybody comes and um, asks about Evergreen, to give them my card and for them to call me. So I hadn't received any calls. I did uh, look at the um, zoning codes and, and building codes, and we are okay to house up to 12 people. So it's a, called a family community. And so far, so good. We have, haven't had any issues. So that's good news. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Bruce. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments for Mariana, feel free to reach out. Her contact info is up there and I'll make sure I follow up uh, with her contact info for anybody else. Uh, I wanna thank all three of our guests today because uh, that was great presentations from all three of you. I think you really got a good feel for some of the different types of sober living, but I, I hope also you uh, come away with uh, from this meeting um, feeling the need like we do to continue to advocate for more of these places just because 
um, we see the success stories, but we also see the continuing need and there's just not enough beds. And uh, the more we could do to, to advocate and educate, I think uh, is super important. Um, we got about five minutes. I'm about to turn it over here to my colleague, Salea. You're gonna hear her voice. You're not gonna see her, uh, but just you're gonna hear a disembodied voice. Salea is our RCO coordinator. She's the coordinator for the DuPage Recovery Community Organization. Oh, you can see her, okay. So she's gonna be uh, mute on here, but I'm gonna hand her my microphone. So Salea, I'm gonna let you update everybody on what the DuPage RCO is doing. Recording in progress. Mute it. Mute it. It is. Okay, it is. go ahead. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Jared. Um, thank you to all our speakers. That was a wealth of knowledge. Um, so currently, the DuPage RCO um, is providing um, numerous different kinds of services throughout DuPage County. Um, we are uh, providing services relating to school prevention. Um, so we have middle school coming up and then also are doing prevention education throughout different high schools um, and going to health classes and speaking. We are also providing one-on-one -on -one services to two different high schools and assisting their social work department with referrals. Um, pertaining to substance use. And then we are also doing programming in the jail. Um, alongside, we're providing recovery coaching as well as we get referrals or formal clients or anyone out in the community. So if you know um, someone who is looking for recovery coaching services, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to right after um, my update Put my information in the chat for you all so that you have that information as well. Um, we are still hosting our virtual Narcan training um, third Thursday of every month. So we have that coming up next Thursday, the 21st. It is at 12.30 p.m. Um, and that's held every month. So if you or someone you know is wanting to attend that, feel free to do so. And then aside from that, we are also providing um, groups in the community, um, grief and loss, smart friends and family as well. So we are looking to expand some of our um, smart recovery meetings throughout the community so that we could target more areas and, uh, and make it more accessible for people um, that are looking for sober supports that are not as traditional. So thank you for having me and then I will talk to you guys later. Thank you, Salea. Uh, yeah, so we are always looking for partners, uh, whether that's uh, if you're an organization or you're somebody that would like recovery support services at your site, come and talk to us. Uh, the other thing, I am looking at round two of Narcan boxes. If you were around last year and you know that we put out three Narcan boxes at partner sites in DuPage County, in addition to a vending machine, uh, we are talking to partner sites for round two of those boxes. So if you uh, or someone you know works someplace that could benefit from having a Narcan takeaway box installed there, let me know. Uh, we literally do everything, the installation, the refill, the cost, you host it, uh, which I think is a pretty good deal. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, we do got about two minutes left here. What updates do we have? Is there any uh, programs, events, or organizations that you would like to uh, mention to the group? I'm going to go ahead and open it up now. You can raise your tiny digital hand or just uh, unmute yourself. Go ahead. Marissa, go right ahead. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to mention, I think Phil also put it in the chat, but that Stony Brook Center is having an in-person training on addiction in the family on Tuesday, March 19th, so coming up here. Um, it is approved by ICB for two CEUs for a bunch of different letters that I will post in the chat for those who are interested. Um, and typically we have food for that as well. So um, just if you want to give me an email uh, with your information so I can make sure we have enough seats, I'll post all that information here in the chat so you can do that. Um, and then just wanted to mention that we do still have openings um, in our programs for methadone um, intensive outpatient programming for uh, clients who are on medication assisted treatment or not either way. Um, and outpatient counseling, and that we do have a MARA medication assisted recovery anonymous meeting that's running on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Um, so thank you. Well, you said that's MARA anonymous? Yes. 
I actually have never heard of that before. That's amazing. I'm going to have to write yeah. that down. There's not a ton around, I don't think. Um, but yeah, for people who are on any sort of medication assisted recovery, um, it's just a little bit more friendly for people who are using methadone, suboxone, um, things like that to assist them in their recovery. So Oh, that's uh, super yeah. important. That's great. That's great that y'all offer that. Yep. All yeah, right, we're thanks, we're one of sense. two actually. Um the other one is down in Greenville, just a little south of Springfield. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm definitely going to refer people to that because I think that's one of those things that's definitely needed. Um, hold on. There's someone in person that's yelling. Hey, everybody. Just wanted to let you guys know we're going to be launching something called the Spiritual Care Network, um, which is uh, basically we're going to have a Midwest chapter, which is going to be Chicagoland area. There's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There's a, so we'll have, um, so a spiritual care network. It's going to be ran out of Compass Church in Naperville. Um, but basically mental health professionals, um, a faith-based networking group for people to get together, network, come together. And, uh, so I'll have more details on that. If anybody wants to get a hold of me, um, I will have Salea write my information because being in person, we don't have the zoom because we get yelled at. So there's, um, so I'll have everybody uh, that information. You can text me um, and we're going to a lot of the stuff's going to be done through Facebook. So we'll get a hold of it and get everything situated through there. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Any last updates? Hi, I don't have any. Hello, everybody. How you doing? I don't hey, have any updates. My name is Mr. Bo Cook. I am the project manager for the Mental Health Transitional Center at Cook County Jail. Um, I have my Rancher Specialist Coordinator on here as well. Um, I wanted her to join this wonderful plethora of information, and hopefully she will be joining regularly in the future. But I just want to say you guys are so inspiring. You guys are doing so much good work out in, out, just say out there, outside of the city limits of Chicago, okay? So um, we have all types of people who come through Cook County Jail, and it's just nice to know that we have a place um, that if they come from your areas that we can work with to get them the help that they need. So thank you and God bless everyone. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Absolutely, Bo. It's always nice to have you here. I know you've attended before and uh, Bridget, we would love to have you back and uh, any help you need coming out of the Cook County Jail stuff, just let us know and we'd be happy to uh, try and connect those clients. Um, all right. Thank so. You. The next meeting of the DuPage Ross Council is on Wednesday, April 10th. Uh, and again, reminder, we're going to be talking about specialized services for refugee and BIPOC populations, as well as welcoming Restoration 61 to talk a little bit about uh, the work combating uh, human trafficking in our area. So make sure you attend those. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording, but I'm going to hang on this meeting for a little bit longer in case anybody has any other questions. And uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks to everybody.